Proudly, we hail. York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Sage can be many things, a spice for turkey dressing, or a profoundly wise and venerable man, but as part of our modern military lexicon, it has taken on a new meaning. Sage now stands for semi-automatic ground environment. Definition, a completely new defense concept. Listen now as we present our play, Spread the Alarm. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, are you a veteran, a former serviceman, if so, you should know about your new opportunities under the liberalized re-enlistment policy of Uncle Sam's Air Force. You see, right now, the United States Air Force is accepting a wider range of skills with a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments. The Air Force may also be able to guarantee you training in a critical skill. Yes, if you qualify, this guarantee may be made even before you re-enlist. You can get full details on all these new liberal benefits by contacting your nearest Air Force recruiter. Talk it over. See why it's a fact that today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Spread the Alarm. Hear that sound? That's a digital computer working at high speeds, instantaneously and continuously clicking away at figures that could someday save your life. This is an age of modern weapons, more advanced than the mind of man thought could ever be conceived. Planes move faster than sound. Intercontinental missiles are capable of dealing destruction with eye-winking quickness. In the past, the basic building block of defense against air attack was the single radar endlessly sweeping the skies. Hello, ground control. I have a bogey bearing 260. Information was transmitted orally by interphone to operators who plotted the track of aircraft, while other operators compared these tracks against flight plans of friendly aircraft. We have your bogey now bearing 275, approximate course 000, zero, zero. airspeed 210 at Angels 15. Scramble. If the aircraft were hostile, human operators had to quickly estimate their speed and then calculate what course our own interceptors should fly to bring them within range of where the hostiles would be when the interceptors got there. With the prospect that air battles of any future war would be waged at supersonic speeds, such techniques clearly would not be adequate. So we're back at our computer. It's part of one of the boldest military projects ever to be undertaken in peacetime. For located at Hanscom Air Force Base, a few miles northeast of Boston, is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Lincoln Laboratory. Here, the Air Force, in cooperation with MIT and almost a dozen civilian agencies, is developing an air defense system intended to at least partially counter the vastly increased offensive power of airborne nuclear weapons. This is to be done with a network of digital computers the most complex electronic data processing system ever attempted. All right, cut them. That should have calculated the time and location of the earliest possible interception. You understand, uh, McMullen? Uh, I think so, sir. Now, uh, this should all take less than a minute after the enemy aircraft is first detected. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir, but uh, from the way Sage works, they're going to be doing away with us altogether. <laughs> well, we're a long way from that, Sklar. We depend on human judgment constantly. Once the data from the outlying radar stations has been processed, we try to break a mass raid down into manageable missions. 
That's where you men working with weapons assigners come in. It'll be up to you to make sure that all the information is right up to the minute so that the command can instantaneously evaluate the situation, decide what components of the defense to throw up, fighter planes or anti-aircraft missiles or shells. Then you, with the radars and computers, furnish the necessary guidance and control. It's a uh, difficult concept to grasp, and you're doing very well for the first week, so keep up the good work. See you all Monday morning. Oh, well, all I can say is, wow. Yeah, double for me. Come on, let's get back to the barracks. Huh? What's your hurry? It's, uh, it's the weekend, kid. Who knows what adventures wait without? Oh, all right, this way. Oh, boy. You know, I still can't get over it working on something like Sage. You know, my boy, we're really in the front row. That's not bad for a couple of airmen. Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a genius, no less. You can uh, tell by the pointed head and the beady eyes. <laughs> hey, where are you from, Mike? Where's Archer Avenue? Oh, it's Chicago, on the southwest side. One of the beauty spots of America. Yeah. Hey, where, where are you from? Uh, Sioux Falls. That's in South Dakota. Okay. Well, the Air Force can certainly move a guy around. It's, it's just great. I feel like the guy who went around the world in 80 days. Oh, you bet. Look where we are right now in Lexington. Almost on the spot, Paul Revere made his famous hey, ride. which reminds me. How about going into Boston tonight? You know, take a look around Scully Square? Oh, I don't think so. I, I thought I'd take the bus into Lexington. Well, what are you going to do there? Well, don't think I'm crazy, but I've been looking for markers. Well, you what? Uh, markers, historical markers. Uh -huh. I've always been kind of a bug on history. <laughs> the Air Force really sent you to the right spot, didn't they? Yeah. Listen, why don't you come along? Oh, no, no, no. i got to relax. I won't be able to handle this stuff next week if I don't go out and forget about it for a couple of days. That's the way I'm built. Look, I, I know it sounds cockeyed, but I think coming with me can help you help yourself. I think you're out of your mind. Oh, come on, Mike. Come with me. I guarantee it won't be dull. Not for a minute. All right. What have I got to lose? <laughs> get it. You tell me we're going out looking for markers, and uh, here we are right in downtown Boston. Well, we had to start somewhere. Wait till the bus stops. I'll show you. Washington Street, Colonel Hall. Come on, come on. Now, you see, there it is. Look, down that street. Where? Oh, come on. You see there, between the buildings, that's the old North Church. Oh. Don't you remember your Longfellow, the midnight ride of Paul Revere? No, oh, not too well. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, listen, my ch children, you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Are you doing Hardly great? a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. Uh, I'm finished. <laughs> he said to his friend, yeah. if the British march by land or sea from the town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church Tower as a signal light. Now that is the old North Church. Come on, let's go down and take a look at it. Oh, why don't you watch where you're going? You ruined my shot. Well, I'm sorry, miss. Oh, we were just... darn, and it was the last of my film, too. Well, there's a store right next to the church. You can buy some film there. In fact, you can even buy some shots of the church. You don't have to take them. Oh, really? That's very kind of you. Uh, hey, miss, I don't know why you're miffed. He didn't do anything. Oh, you servicemen are all alike. Excuse me, but may I pass? Hey, now, wait a minute. What was that about servicemen? May I get by? No, you may not. I guess you must think you're one of the Boston Blue Bloods or something. Yeah, she looks a little blue. Well, that still doesn't give you the right to be impolite. I'm sorry if I brushed your arm, but that still gave you no reason to, to, to berate us. And as far as men in the service are concerned, there are all kinds, but you'll discover, if you care to look, that the training the service man gets makes him a bit more considerate than most of his civilian counterparts. May I pass now? Certainly. Good afternoon. So long. Hey. In case you uh, didn't notice, she's not bad. No, well, I didn't notice. Well, come on, let's go up to the church. still here. You know, if you half close your eyes, you can just imagine Paul Revere and his family sitting here praying, believing that God would eventually grant them the liberty they so dearly sought, believed in and fought for. I'll be darned if you're not right. 
History really, well, it really does come alive in these places. Hey, hey, there's our girlfriend taking pictures. Oh, yeah. I guess she found some more film. Well, she's not watching what she's doing. She's, hey, she's gonna back down those stairs and break her fool neck. You're right. Hey, where are you going? Hey, now watch it. You're gonna. Oh, that's you again. Well, you almost backed down those stairs. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't see them. You're an airman, aren't you? <laughs> Does that make a difference? I'm sorry I was rude before. Guess I owe you an explanation. No, that isn't necessary. Well, 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 well. No sparks? <laughs> no. This is Mike Sklar. He's stationed with me. Uh, I don't know your name. Sally Grant. I don't know yours, either. Uh, Jay. Jay McMullen. Well, <clears throat> we have to be going. Uh, so do I. Thanks for saving my life. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't even get her phone number or where she lives. Oh, we, we better be gone if we want to get out to Medford before supper time. Most of these historical places close before dark. Hmm. Are you a character? Now, what is history at a time like this? You've got a chance to be part of some living history, and you muff it. Boy, are you a character. <laughs> Boy, are you a character. I, I, I can't get over it. Uh, there's the house down there at the end of the street, the small one. Oh, come on. Let's get something to eat first. I'm dying of hunger. Oh, come on, Mike. Take a look. Then we can stop. Oh, look, I wish we could knock off. I've lost my enthusiasm for this whole deal. Well, now, look. Stick with me. Then we can go back downtown, have supper, and, well, go to a movie or something. All right, all right. But if you'd only taken that girl's number, maybe she had a friend. Look, I told you about Paul Revere's being on the Charlestown shore. Yeah, you well, did, Well, once yeah. he saw the second lantern in the tower, he was off. Uh -huh. See, and he came up along the shore, across the Mystic, just like we did, and just about midnight rode into Medford. See, he probably came right up this way and stopped at that house. Where are you going, hey? Hey, Jay, where are you going? Hey! Well, what, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you must be following Paul Revere's ride, too. Oh, I, I'm a history major at Radcliffe. It's a term paper I'm writing. Oh, well, that's what I'm going to do when I go back to college, major in history. That is, uh, if I don't decide to stay in the Air Force. <laughs> Isn't it funny how you can get a completely wrong idea about someone? Well, I bet you're not even from Boston. Hey, Jay, ask her if she's got a friend. I'm from Iowa, Sioux City. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Jay. I've been there. That's only about 150 miles from home. Uh, you, you haven't got a roommate, have you? Uh, how, how'd you come to go to school out here? I won a scholarship. Ah, excuse me for living. Hey, look, why don't we all go on together, huh? I, I, I thought we could follow the route right into Concord. What, do you think we still have time before dark? It just so happens that I have a very important engagement in town. Oh, gee, Mike, I forgot. See, I promised that we'd go into town, have dinner, and go to a movie. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right, as long as you are happy. Lost weekend, that's what this is. Uh, look, Sally, uh, are you free tomorrow? Oh, I have to go to church in the morning, and then I am. Why? Well, look, I, I think Mike's had about enough for one day. Let's go take a quick look into the house and go have dinner. Then tomorrow, uh, you and I can finish, all right? No, all you're right. talking, and I can spend the day sleeping. Well, I'm sorry, Mike. I, I thought you'd really get something out of all this. You see, uh, we're radar operators, I, and I thought there was a very real parallel between Paul Revere's ride and the work we do. Well, I think you're right. Oh, there's a marker. Uh-huh. Paul Revere stopped here during his famous ride the night of April 18, 1775. Gee, I wonder if we can go in. Try the door. Oh, it's, it's locked. Try knocking. Someone's coming. What you want? Well, uh, we, we were wondering if we couldn't see the house. No, you can't. Come back tomorrow. Well, uh, is there someone living here? What you think I'm doing? Standing on my head? Come on, Jay, we can come back tomorrow. You're soldiers, aren't you? Ah, uh, you're not redcoats. Redcoats, no, no. Those are Air Force uniforms. Soldiers, eh? Well, you better get your muskets. Uh, our muskets? Yes. The British are coming. Oh, I can feel this coming. Uh, would you, would, would you, uh, would you mind telling me your name? Me? Everybody knows me. I'm Paul Revere. Oh, no!
be back with the second act in just a moment. But first, many times a man is skilled in a particular job, yet unable to find a use for it. Has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service gained skill that's going to waste? Then listen, you may be able to put that skill to work as a member of the United States Air Force. You've earned credits toward a valuable retirement income, so protect that initial investment. For full details, write or visit your Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now for the second act of the Proudly We Hail production, Spread the Alarm. In the spring of 1949, the United States Air Force called together top officials of some 50 major aircraft, engine, and electronic firms to consider the pressing problem of continental air defense. Modern weapons had outdated the system in use. Shortly after this meeting, a group known as the Air Defense Systems Engineering Committee, or ADSEC, was formed to study the effectiveness of the U.S. defense against air attack. The ADSEC recommendations eventually led the military services to request the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to organize Lincoln Laboratory and located at Hanscom Air Force Base near Boston. From its small beginning, Lincoln Laboratory has grown to the point where it now has almost 2,000 people who are working, developing new concepts of air defense. The semi-automatic ground environment system, better known as SAGE, is the main technique that has been worked out at Lincoln. It consists of an interconnected network of huge digital computers, each fed by a group of air defense radars and from other sources. The computers automatically process this data, calculate battle instructions, and display the air battle situation pictorially for human controllers. When completed, the system will have the capability of automatically guiding interceptors and missiles to intercept hostile aircraft. It's exacting work and the Air Force personnel who were assigned to Lincoln are carefully chosen and trained with an exactness the work demands. Right now, though, on a weekend's pass, two of the trainees are on the trail of a legendary member of our military services who well knew the value of an adequate early warning system. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Mike, didn't I tell you it wouldn't be dull? You met Paul Revere. Holy oh, mackerel, what a character. <laughs> Lucky we met that other man who told us he was harmless. I thought we were going to have to go out and fight the Red Coats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see, this is what I've been telling you. If you get too serious about anything, you crack up. Oh, come on now, Mike. I mean, that's exaggerating things a bit. Mine is a genuine interest. I'm not like a crackpot. I just thought I could prove a point. You know, life has grown infinitely more complex, but when you pare our problems down to the core, they're not too much different from those of our ancestors. And I'm, I'm not only talking about operating radar or a computer. You can take love, for example. Ooh, any time. <laughs> no, I'm serious, Mike. Follow the great love affairs down through time, and you'll see they're not too dissimilar. Isn't that right, Sally? Uh, I'm sorry, Jay. My mind is somewhere else. Well, I was, uh, I was talking about love. Love? Yeah, you know, the great love affairs down through time. See, I'm trying to prove my point with Mike, that we are making history today just as our ancestors made it hundreds and thousands of years ago. Oh, I, I think that's true, Jay. <laughs> you do, Sally? Hey, look, uh, if I'm in the way here, I can always leave. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Um, <clears throat> everyone finished? You mean with dinner, of course. <laughs> Slickers. Well, how about it, Mike? Have you relented any? Think you can stand some more history? I thought you decided to knock off till tomorrow. Look, Sally and I talked about it when you went to get your cigarettes. I mean, it might be fun to go ahead and finish what we've started. It's dark out. What do you see? Revere made the whole ride in the dark. Besides, there is a moon. Boy, oh, boy, you, you two really make a pair. But if you really think you need a chaperone, I'll come along. Okay, then. Let's go again. It was two by the village clock when he came to the bridge in Concord Town. He heard the bleeding of the flock and the twitter of birds among the trees, and he felt the breath of the morning breeze. Uh-oh, think it's gonna rain. Well, that's it anyway. That's the whole ride. Uh, I hope he had sense enough to go home and go to bed when he was finished. <laughs> Strangely enough, legend has it that he didn't. He picked up his musket and went out and fought in the Battle of Concord. Come on, let's, let's run for cover. Uh, here, Sally, uh, over this way. Okay, coming. Oh. 
Oh, boy, I've, I've really had it. It's 11 o'clock. I'm wet, I'm tired, I'm hungry. I must have been out of my mind let you talk me into this in the first place. And may I quote you, what we're doing here at Lincoln is a direct counterpart of what Paul Revere did. Come on, Mike, come with me. I guarantee it won't be dull. No, not for a minute. Mike, you make it sound awful. Well, it is. Well, okay, okay. Let's go. It's raining. All right, then, let's... Wait till it breaks. Jay, did you see this on the door? What? Oh. Paul Revere stopped here during his famous ride the morning of April 19, 1775. Oh, no. Why, why don't you knock? Maybe we'll run into the same guy we did before. <gasps> oh! oh I, I'm sorry. You see, we were talking about, well, in Lexington. Look, why don't the three of you come in and get out of the rain? Well, are you sure we're not bothering you? Oh, my goodness, of course not. Now, leave your wet things here and come into the front room. I've got a fire going in there. I'll make you some hot tea. Take the chill off. Excuse me, sir. Uh, you'll pardon my asking, but your name isn't Revere, uh, is it? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, you live here all alone? I like the house. And after my wife died, I decided to stay here. It's charming. Those beams are the original beams. They're over 250 years old. Well, look, I, I guess we owe you an explanation trafficking all over your property. You see, we were out uh, following the route of Paul Revere's ride. Well, that's a rather unusual avocation for young people. Uh, look, why don't you all sit and relax, and I'll make that tea I promised. Uh, you're sure it's all right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, this is delightful. It's been many years since I've sat with a group of young people who've seemed so aware. I have renewed respect for our Air Force. I know our national security is in good hands. And as for you, young lady, you're a charmer. <laughs> I'll say the same for you, Mr. Collins. Uh, please call me Professor. After a great many years in an academic setting, the only thing I still retain is an affection for the title. Oh, you were, you were a professor? Not of history, I hope. Well, to answer you both, I was a professor in the School of Business Administration, a very erudite position in a very mundane setting. Well, uh, how come you're uh, living here in this house? I'm afraid I wasn't completely truthful with you when Mike asked if I was a Revere. I am, uh, by marriage. This was my wife's house, and she was a direct descendant of Paul's. In fact, that's probably why he stopped at this house. We like to think it was the terminal point of his ride, but that fact was never proven. I like living here. It gives me a feeling of continuity with the past, and even more, a feeling of hope for the future. How so? Well, our whole generation is a paradox in so many ways. Here we are in the middle of the 20th century, surrounded by a technological colossus that defies the imagination. Uh, if we really wanted to dwell on it, think about what goes on, what we as men have shaped, <laughs> it would stagger us. We haven't been able to catch up with ourselves since the beginning of the century, and even before that. Oh, and yet it's a, it's a wonderful world in so many ways. Oh, now, don't misinterpret my remarks for a moment. I wouldn't want to have lived at any other moment in history. What I am saying is this. The momentary sense of discomfort I may get from my morning newspaper's headlines is often offset by the quiet dignity of the house I live in. Here, I know, an ancestor of mine lived almost 300 years ago and believed pretty much as I do in a democratic way of life. He must have been afraid at times, as I am afraid, that he'd be engulfed by the tide of the times. Yet, believing as he did in the inherent God-given goodness of man and his ability to survive, he faced each day with courage and the feeling that he was free and that life and its outcome were in his hands. <laughs> I try in my own small way to do the same. Oh, Professor Collins, that's wonderful. Wonderful, my dear? I don't know. We all need a reason for being. I spent most of my academic life in a very calloused atmosphere. The world of business and business machines. Computers? Yes, computers too. And I always felt that a world without mind and feeling was a world I didn't want to be a part of. So 
Oh, well, now, enough of me and my stodginess. What about you, young people? You've told me so little about yourselves. Well, uh, well, we're in the Air Force, as you can see. Uh, ground controllers, radar men. And we're stationed at that. There isn't too much to 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 that. There isn't too much that we can tell you. That sounds intriguing. Well, uh, put it this way. We're ready to, to do much the same thing Paul Revere did. If anything should ever happen that would deny us those God-given rights you were talking about, well, we'd do pretty much as he did. We'd spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm. You didn't have to take me all the way home? Well, I, I wanted to. You think Mike found his way to the base all right? Oh, I'm not too worried about Mike. He may get lost, but he seems to have a knack for eventually finding his way back. Here we are. This is my house. Well, now, uh, will I see you again? That's up to you. Well, we did have a date for tomorrow. I haven't broken it. And I haven't said that I wanted to break it. You want to pick me up here about noon? You know, that's less than 12 hours from now. It'll be the longest 12 hours in my whole life. And mine. Sally, one thing, though. Yes, Jack. I think we've had enough of Paul Revere for a while. Agreed? Agreed. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you realize. Yes, the Air Force now has instituted a new policy that offers big new benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. The Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. For full details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the folder for prior servicemen. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>